the Obamacare repeal zombie is back from the dead for, what is this, the third time, fourth time, fifth time, something like that. Uh, so this one is called the Graham Cassidy Heller Obamacare repeal bill. Um, now, let me go ahead and give you a simple summary. This is from the Centers for Budget and Policy, and it's uh, CBO prior estimates. In other words, they haven't done their in-depth analysis yet, but they've done enough to give us these facts. So here's what would happen if this were to pass. An estimated 32 million people will lose coverage within 10 years. That's not uh, officially scored yet, but that's the estimate. 32 million would lose coverage within 10 years. It ends the Medicaid expansion. Healthcare for 11 million low-income adults. Uh, ends all subsidies for the exchange, replaced by a smaller and declining block grant. So this is redistribution from the poor and the middle class to the rich, also known as the only thing that Republicans know how to do. Uh, the block grant doesn't have to be spent on the same population. So again, redistribution to the rich. Cuts coverage for low-income seniors, children, and people with disabilities by 7% by 2026 with a per capita cap. Um, ends federal protections on pre-existing conditions. Wow, look at that. Lifetime caps and essential benefits. 50% of states expected to do so. So in other words, it makes the protection for pre-existing conditions optional by state. And about half the states, because they're the red states, would say, yeah, in our state, we don't have protection for pre-existing conditions. Um, we have ends all cost-sharing payments to low-income Americans, ends all funding for coverage by 2026, cuts $250 billion between now and 2026, average state cut of 17% through 2026, 100% afterwards. Uh, averages would be dramatically different. 20 states estimates to lose 35 to 60 percent of funding to move money to rural red states. CBO has not estimated impact on premiums, but likely 20 percent spike by next year. Holy shit. Would likely be presented to the House as take it or leave it if it passes the Senate, which might be the only saving grace in this bill. Uh, provides no further no funding for recessions, natural disasters, public health emergencies, or price spikes. Targets women's health and family planning, so gutting Planned Parenthood, of course. Uses the same 50 votes, only partisan technique to pass. Upends all bipartisan progress of the last two weeks. So all the deals that uh, Trump actually cut with the Democrats um, would be overridden by this. So, yeah, yet again, it, it's horrendous. <laughs> I'm always amazed by... When Republicans propose these health care reforms, they have nothing to propose because the Democrats already did their idea. That's what Obamacare is. It's a piece of legislation that was originally proposed, or a version of it was proposed by Richard Nixon, and then Bob Dole, and Mitt Romney implemented it in Massachusetts, and the Heritage Foundation, which is a right-wing think tank, wrote policy papers on it and said, this is our answer to single payer. Because it's an, it's an individual uh, mandate style system. So you say you have to buy private insurance and then there's also a Medicaid expansion aspect of it. So the Democrats did the Republican idea. They implemented it into law. By the way, they got zero Republican votes. But they did the Republican idea. So now the Republicans have nowhere to go. What are they going to do? They're like, I don't know. Let's uh, take a sledgehammer and swing it at everybody's face. And that's what every, uh, you know, legislation, every piece of legislation they propose on health care, that's what it is. Guys, Trump care had a 70, 17, excuse me, percent approval rating. So they propose a health care reform that makes everything worse. More people are uninsured. The, the prices shoot up. You have redistribution from the middle class and the poor to the rich. So it's not... Like, they act like it's impossible to crunch the numbers and get facts and data on their bills. But when we do that, we find out very quickly, oh, this is nothing but a giant giveaway to the rich and to the private health insurance companies and big pharma. That's all it is. Now, the Democrats are bad enough, again, because they did their old Republican proposal. So they're already serving the health insurance companies. 
But the Republicans take it to a, a comical point where you you can't even spin it to say, oh, this is uh, good for people. There's no way to even theoretically spin this. The only argument they make to their constituents is, yeah, we're, we're repealing Obamacare. As if that's, wow, oh, wow. How bold, how bold you are. You're such heroes for regular people. That's not, that's become a fucking meme on the right. Just, we gotta repeal Obamacare. And then what? We gotta, just, we gotta repeal Obamacare. It's not like if you repeal Obamacare, a magic wand is waved and then everything is great. No, the system before Obamacare was so abysmal that it merited any kind of reform, even a shitty reform. But now they say, no, if we get rid of Obamacare, everything will be perfect. Then why wasn't everything perfect before Obamacare? Why was everything a mess before Obamacare? You had more people uninsured and prices were higher. They go, no, let's go back to that system. They have no ideas, man. They have no real ideas. I've made this point a million times, but go talk to somebody on the far right and ask them, hey, what's your ideal plan? If you ask somebody on the so-called far left, which is just people who are right in the United States, hey, what's your idea on uh, healthcare? They say, single-payer Medicare for all. You get an answer like that. And they say that. They'll give you reasons. They'll say, hey, look, every other modern nation has one version or another of a single-payer system. They uh, pay less money. They get better outcomes. It just destroys us when you look at the objective studies that have been done on this issue. So, they have well-thought-out proposals. Ask the far right, hey, what's your, uh, what's your ideal proposal? Yeah, repeal Obamacare. No, I said, what's your ideal? I know what you're not for. What are you for? Ooh, gotta get rid of the lines around the states. As if that's le that would fix all of our problems. You know what happens when you get rid of the lines around the states and you make it so that health insurance companies can go wherever they want and people can purchase across state lines? All that's going to happen is all the health insurance companies are going to uh, set up headquarters in the state that taxes them the least. So that's nothing but a ruse to give multinational corporations, or excuse me, not multinational corporations, health insurance companies, more money. That's all that is. Hey, let's give health insurance companies more money by letting them save more money on taxes. So that's their first idea, get rid of the lines around the states. That doesn't do anything that's going to help the people. That's just to help the corporations. And then if you push them far enough, what do they say? Uh, free market. That's my idea, free market. But we had a free mar- we still have a free market system. It's just been tweaked under Obamacare. But we had an even bigger free market pre-Obamacare, and that was the system that was so bad that it needed reform immediately. So your ideal, uh, system is to go back to the system pre-Obamacare, which was worse. Your solution is to go back to more of the problem. So they have no fucking ideas. It's just, you gotta get rid of Obamacare. And now, uh, Lindsey Graham has rehabilitated this horrific idea, and his provisions are a joke. And by the way, they're like one or two votes short of passing in the Senate. Oh no. Oh no. And by the way, mainstream media, not covering it. They, they're so bad that I can't even put into words how bad they are. Like, you have one fucking job to give facts and information and look out for the American people. That's not that difficult. You know, keep your eye on the ball. They can't. They can't. They're too busy talking about 9,000 other menial nonsense things. Sean Spicer was at the Emmys last night. They're like, Sean Spicer was at the Emmys! Fucking healthcare! Oh my God! Talk about healthcare! People are on the verge of losing their their healthcare, and you're you know, you're like red balloon. <sighs> so that's where we are in America today. Mainstream media is not talking about it. They're one or two votes short. The only saving grace is that. They, they're saying it'd be take it or leave it with the House of Representatives. And even if it were to get through the Senate, it's doubtful to get through the House because there's enough um, super duper ultra far right Republicans in the so-called Freedom Caucus, hilariously named Freedom Caucus, who would say, no, it's not dumb enough. Make it dumber. 
So, and, you know, how, you guys have no idea how many times the dumbest of the dumb politicians in the country have actually saved us. And what I mean by that is, like, for example, establishment Republicans and Obama, back when he was president, they cut a deal, a grand bargain, to cut Social Security and Medicaid. And you know who saved us? The Tea Partiers. So they're like, no, we want more cuts, so we're going to vote against this. Yeah. So, <laughs> there wasn't any cuts to it, because the dumbest politicians in the country said, we want more, and we're going to hold out for more, so we got nothing. Well, there's another situation where the dumbest people in the country might save us if it gets past the Senate, which is still a question mark. We might be relying on the Tea Partiers to say, no, I want a clean repeal of Obamacare. I want to get rid of every single provision. And then I want to replace it by somebody shooting Americans in the face with a sniper. Yeah. <laughs>